One night in the early 70s, my friends and I, we were just getting driving practice, driving around in our cars. Mike, my friend Mike, had the nicest 1967 Pontiac Parisian, baby blue, and I think it had a white interior. This car was so nice, he got it for $700 because the person who owned it before him um, took it to the gas station where Mike worked for repairs. And the shop did the repairs but wanted to get paid before they released the car to the owner. And the owner says, no, I'm walking away from the car. So the shop got to own the car and they could sell it off to get paid for the work. Mike said, I'm going to jump on that and get that car. So he got it for $700. Well, this was perfect for us teenage boys. Uh, the gang I hung around with, uh, this we're talking early 70s, and um, we were getting cars, about half of us, maybe more, had cars hand me down from her parents. Very few guys had their own car, and I'm talking grade 11, so it would be 1974. And we, we had just recently acquired our licenses, so we wanted to get ours in the saddle. We wanted to go driving anywhere we could. One night, we're driving around out in the country, gravel roads, and of course, nothing to do. We're just talking about anything, listening to music. And um, we saw a gigantic flames off in the distance. Uh, so we drove over there and we drove by. We saw it was a really gigantic house, completely consumed by flames. There's no cell phones in those days. So we couldn't call the fire department. There's no one around uh, helping to put the flames out. So we don't know what caused it. We didn't know what the outcome was. A few uh, days later, we heard on the news that that particular fire, uh, a family of five had got killed in that fire. We, we just felt terrible that we couldn't have done something. But was, what was even weirder that night, same night uh, that, the, that we saw the fire, we were driving on a different country road and Mike had a tape deck in his car, and uh, he was playing uh, Elton John. One of the songs he played was uh, Funeral for a Friend. And if you listen to that song, it's got this uh, really scary uh, organ piece in it. So we decided to put that on, and it's a dark, dark night, country road, just starlight. I don't even think there was a moon. And we're kind of talking back and forth, and the scary music's playing, and then Mike's car suddenly goes completely black, silent. The music stops, and we could hear the tires rolling slowly to a stop on the gravel road. And we all started screaming. Like, we're teenage boys, you know, we're, we're tough enough until, um, you know, panic sets in and the panic it's contagious so we all panic none of us want to get out because we had oh we had recently been telling each other stories of uh, how there was a hatchet man in the woods and he was going to come and kill us that was before everything went black so mike the driver that was his car and he was kind of the leader of the gang everybody looked up to mike even though he's the shortest guy in the gang by a couple inches uh, he was also uh, the, the nicest person, so we made him the leader of the gang. Uh, he got out into the dark. <laughs> it was so dark. Nothing. We didn't have a lighter. We didn't have matches. We didn't have a flashlight. He goes to the front. So, like, you, I think inside the car, you pull a latch for the hood, which he had done. He gets out the driver's side door. It's so black. We had to feel our way uh, on the interior of the car to find where the doors were, and then we got out. So uh, about three of us pile out, go to the front, and then Mike says something very logical. He says, the way everything just shut off and went black, I think it's an electrical problem. And then I could feel, even though it was dark, I could feel everybody's eyes 
turning towards me because my dad was an electrician. And of course, that means by osmosis, I'm supposed to know everything there is about electricity and automotive electronics. Oh, come on. I don't know a damn thing about anything. All I know is that a battery has a plus and a negative. That's it. Again, I'm thinking this is hopeless. So we're just standing there wondering what it is we're supposed to be looking for. And once we know what we're looking for, how do we find it? Like we don't have a flashlight. Well, guess what? Mike had stuck his hands into the blackness in his engine compartment, felt around the battery, and he found a tiny little wire. Now this, I suppose, was a ground wire for the battery, and it had come off. So he felt the end of a wire. What a, what a guy. Like he sticks his hand in around the battery, he finds a wire, feels it all the way to the end, finds that the end of that wire isn't connected to anything. So what does he do? He sticks it on a battery pole, and it happens to be the right battery pole. You know, not the negative or the positive. He had put it on the negative. Headlights come on. We go, whoa, that's perfect. So Mike kind of bends the ends of the wire to get some more insulation because it had corroded. He sticks it under the little wing nut, and lo the headlights are on, right? Because that's the way they were on. That's the way they were set when we lost power. So then he gets back into the car, and he starts it up. Everything comes back to life. We all breathe a sigh of relief. We would have been stuck there all night. How do you call for help? We'd have to walk however many miles to a farmhouse and get help. No. Mike fixes it out of the blackness. So, I mean, hooray for Mike. He just saved us all. But that was one weird and scary night. We saw the big house fire that turned out later. There was five deaths. And that same night, his battery decides to go dead, uh, get disconnected while we're driving down a dark, scary country road while we're paying, playing scary music. That's one more of my adventures from the early 70s. More to come.